Okay. Are we live? Okay, we have there we go. audio. Perfect. Yeah. Welcome to Trading Water Podcast. My name is Hugh Murray. Uh, my co-host, Travis Grant, cannot be here again. He is uh, out there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's fucking doing something. So we're going to run it back, man. Uh, we're going old school. Um, we got our... Producer, the man behind the scenes, is going to be my guest co-host today. Nice. Welcome, Tony Walker. Thanks for having me there, Hugh Murray. Anytime, buddy. Um, we're going to do like a reverse knock them dead today. That's right. Where I'm, I'm going to take the fucking lead. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Tony's going to hang with us and see what comes out. Um, <laughs> Nothing of any substance, I'll tell you. Yeah, that. probably not. Tony's fucking probably exhausted. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, it's it's weird being uh, a writer. You know, I just wanted to like bring up what we were just talking about. Okay, cool. Um, because like you work on these things, right? Like, like I've been working on a novel for like ten years. You know, wow, it's been that long. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit. and like I, I have. Did I ever send it to you? No, I would love I, to check I, it out. I, it's not finished, you know. But like, I have like eight chapters. I've worked really fucking hard on it, but um, it kind of uh took a back seat because um, uh, you know, my best friend uh, his name's Mike. He uh, he's a sculptor, and uh, we decided to make a fucking comic book. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh. We've been working on that the last two years, and um, because I'm a cog in the wheel, which is I'm not used to as a writer and a comedian, and I was talking about this last night because um, the um, but the the girl uh, in the shot, her name is Talia. I met her for the first time. She's uh, dating uh, this dude Curtis, who's like really cool. Uh, that I met like twice. He's a uh, He's like a ghost hunter. Like do, do, this, oh. these people that like are in this comic, like they are some of the most interesting people I've ever met. Like they like hang out at like closed down psych wards and like their funeral directors and like they, they like vet surgeons. They know like <laughs> like you know human anatomy, everything from like human anatomy to like physics. Like you know. Half of them like have their master's degrees, like they're, you know, like all over the spectrum on like the letter community, like yes. LGBTQ, like you know, <laughs> like it, it's it's just like not my normal environment, you know. It's just like freaks and geeks, man, and I'm like I'm into it, you know. Well, that's the thing. Everybody wants to be like in a movie or a comic book, like. Yeah, everybody wants to be a part of uh, something yeah. like that. So you, yeah, you do. You meet all sorts of people it's, on every avenue. It's cool, you know, because like you know, we're we're trying to get everyone involved as as often as possible. Because like in the beginning, like the minor characters were just like you know, like my friend Mike. Like he was just in different <laughs> costumes. <laughs> you know, it's just like all right, like all right. In this shot, Mike's going to put on a hard hat. You know, <laughs> like. In this shot, he's going to be the the main character. It's but, the beauty of having no budget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, dude, it's like less than budget. It's like, oh, I worked overtime today. I'm going to make some props, you know? It, like, we've done, like, some cool stuff, though. And, like, things are, like, it's kind of weird when things, like, just happen to come together. Like, like unbeknownst to everybody, we did a shot where... Uh, my friend John, he gets his head cut off, you know, because you can't die in this realm, you oh, know. Okay. So like a hadron collider blows up, everybody forgets their memory, and no one can die. And um, I don't want to expose too much of the plot, or you know, <clears throat> like the names of the characters or the title, just because it'll go into some AI system, and some fucking mm -hmm. writer in California will be like, "Oh, this is really cool." Right. Um, and I'll have it done before you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Using fucking AI. And uh, so basically, uh, you can't die. So he just becomes a floating head. <laughs> you know? That's cool. So, like, if you get, like, a mortal wound, like, you just have to live with that. Like, it, that's right. it, it's, like, a cool concept. Well, I'm and almost there. I got rid of the yeah, one line, Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so I went on fucking this app called Timu. 
And like, it's like real cheap shit, you know? And I found like this perfect prop. I just show up to, you know, my friend's apartment to like write one day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just like me and the, you know, the two others that are like really putting in like the most time. And, uh, you know, there's a fourth who really works hard. And it's basically like the four of us are really like, you know, getting it. And, uh, and, and there's like a fifth now, and he's doing like a good job, but he's kind of just passed his apprenticeship. And, um, yeah, we, um, so I show up with this prop, yeah, and like they're like fucking blown away. This, they're like, well, this is what we need. So now he's a floating head hooked up to this heart, steampunk heart, with like, um, you know, like like vents and and like it, it's a really cool prop. It was like twenty bucks. Oh wow! And like you know, then it like gets my friend uh, Chico. He sees it and he's just like, and just like gets to work. And all of a sudden, now he's a floating head attached to a heart with like your tubes and everything. And now it's like, you know, blown away. It's just like I knew what they needed without talking. Right. You know, right. like it, that's like coming from something up there that like i'm not aware of and like last night we were shooting and uh you know it, it got to two o'clock in the morning so now my friend mike's been using his phone because he's all on his phone because like it's like a certain android like my friend chico had a better android so it's like we can't all of a sudden go up in quality right and then we can't switch to an iphone because like the when you send a picture from an iPhone to an Android, like you lose quality. Right. And it's just like, it doesn't work. And so like we needed him to charge his fucking phone. There was no extension cord in the building. And, um, it's two o'clock and like, everybody's looking to me for an answer, you know? Well, yeah. You're the man. I'm, I'm the man. I was like the director for the shoot that day. Um, you know, cause my friend, my friend, Mike, who's like, the creator, you know, he's on the table and like we couldn't, you know, he couldn't do a lot of the shooting. And right. so it was like I was doing shooting for the first time. I had no idea what I was doing. You were the bear. Now you're the man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the bear. <laughs> now you're the bear. The oh, man. my God. I did fucking four minutes as a bear on stage. I don't know if you saw it. I posted I it on Instagram. The video. Yeah. I just I was like, fuck it. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, Yeah. So. Finally, we're looking everywhere for an extension cord so he could just be plugged in while he shoots the thing. So I'm just, he's looking at me. He, he goes, Hugh, what do I do? And like, he's like, you're the engineer, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? I'll just give me a couple of wires. I'm Done. like, Electric. I, sit, I sit in a boiler room and watch Netflix. That's what I do. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you want from me? I wait for people to call me and tell me what to do. Um, <laughs> you know, so I'm just staring at him and he's like, standing right in front of Christmas lights and it like fucking hits me that like Christmas lights plug into each other. Right. You know? And I was like, I didn't know how long the run was, but apparently it was just enough. So I just ripped it off the, I walked over, I just ripped it off the wall. It was like taped up. Yeah. And I was like, Christmas lights are an extension cord. <laughs> and everybody's like, fucking yes like every like it was a scream because like two like they were two kids like the uh we've been calling them uh, i don't want to say um they're two nurses and they're covered in blood fake right. blood and yeah. like the one dude was like laying on a floor for like an hour and a half and like they wanted to go home right. and uh you know they're a couple and um you know they were gonna drive me to my car because i was stranded and, you know, I wasn't doing much. At this point, like, there's eight people in the room. And, I like, I wasn't doing all of the shootings. So, like, I was kind of just moving the fake blood from, like, corner to corner. <laughs> it was just like, Hugh, Hugh, can you get this out of the shot? We don't want a Starbucks Game of Thrones <laughs> mishap, you know? Right, and I'm right. just like, yeah, okay, I'll fucking move the fake blood. <laughs> And I just like, I just felt in the way. So I was just like, would go sit outside, but uh, like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Like, fucking Marissa went to bed. It was cold. You know, it was freezing, you know? And I like, so I just, uh, you know, once the extension cord happened, they were able to get the fucking kids out of there. Uh, you know, the nurses, they dropped me off in my car. Boom. I was home by like almost three in the morning. Oh, my goodness. Save the fucking day. <clears throat> that's it. And that's, and that's what they'll remember. 
Yeah. Like, we need an extension cord. And, and Hugh, he grabbed Christmas lights. Only yeah. Hugh would have thought of that. Yeah, but that's that that's what was happening last night. That was kind of like the magic, you know, and we got what we needed. And like this is what I, I, I brought it up briefly, but I didn't explain it. <clears throat> um being like a writer and like all that I've ever known in um creative uh like the creative circles. I was a blogger, okay. uh sports blogger in two thousand nine before I started comedy. Okay. Uh right after, briefly after college. Um and my blogs started doing good, you know, like I was a sports like comedy blogger. And um then I got into stand up and you know, then I started practicing my hand like, you know, writing like a novel and uh the novel was like really cool, but like I got caught up in the editing process and, yes. and like it, it hindered the creative process because I needed to send it out to friends and be like, Hey, is this it worth writing? Right. You know, I needed some feedback and, um, Then when my friends would read it, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're a fucking typo. You know, the grammar's bad. And I, so then I would go back and edit. And, like, it's just like, okay, dick, like, but is the substance fucking right. cool, right. you know? And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, my one friend was like, oh, you're pretty uh, derivative in this one sentence. And I'm like, what the fuck, derivative? Like, <laughs> dude, you you're, you didn't fucking graduate high school. Shut up. Like, <laughs> We're from Levittown, for crying yeah, I know. Like, we don't dude, use like, big words. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you can be your own worst enemy, though, with the constant editing and your your own worst critic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, I was alone for most of these projects. The only ever time I was ever relying on other people was podcasting. So I, I did have a podcast in 2009. It was an MMA podcast. It, was, it mm -hmm. did pretty well. We had like very famous MMA, MMA people on at the at the time we had the. Um, like the Dana White of uh, um, oh, wow. uh, like not him, but yeah, like know you know, you uh, like of the I think it was Bellator or something, you know, like I forgot his name, uh, because you know eventually he he sold it I think to Dana White or something, but like he um, you know, we had him on the show, you know, but like then that show kind of collapsed because I started comedy and started focusing more on that. I went back to work as an engineer, and my partner joined the police force. In Florida, I you know I never oh, met I never met the guy you know oh, but really? we just kind of flowed you yeah. know and we all met like on Twitter and stuff it was it was uh it was weird back in two thousand nine like Twitter was new you know yeah right wow so like you just would get random followers and they'd be like cool you know like because you'd just be like tweeting about the same stuff like the football game and then it's just like oh this guy's funny you know I'll yeah. follow him and. um but like I'm not used to being a cog in someone's machine, especially with someone else's vision, you know, as a writer. Right. So like if I ever did get a writing job for like a show or something like that, would be like mind blowing to me, you know? It's tough, yeah, because all the the demands of rewrites and what they approve yeah. or don't approve of, you have to let that yeah. licensing in your head. You have to let that go. Yeah, which is, it's tough because like really, what what's been happening? Like I'm one of the main characters in the book. So obviously I can write me. And right. then like my best friend, Mike, I can write him better than he writes him. Mm -hmm. Like in my novel, I made him a character. So then he made me a sculpture and that's how I became a character in right. his universe. And it, it, it worked out because after he read him, he's like, dude, you fucking nailed it, you know? And, um, you know, it just kind of worked out like that. But like, it's like giving up that like in the beginning I was I was pushing back too much and I was just like dude this is fucking stupid like don't add this like what are you doing and he's like dude I'm adding it it's mine you it's know his vision his baby yeah yeah and it's like I had to like you know in um an a term surrender right you right. know it, and it is it's weird to do that yeah and it, it's awkward and I'm not I'm not used to it cuz like being a stand up that's that's where i've focused most of my time you know i've been doing stand up in march will be 15 years wow so that's just me and a pen right you know that's it you know like 
sometimes you write with someone, you know, you get you like me and Keegan used to write together. Me Domenico and uh, D Domenico and Ziegler used to write together. You know, like you had writing buddies, and you would get tips or tags or whatever, you know, and you just hang out and jokes would happen. But uh, that's a lot different than actually writing, though. Yeah, but like different. you know, it's. It's it's mainly been me for 15 years, you know, but like having to sit there and just being like, all right, what the fuck do you want? You know, like, all right, right like if right. you don't want what I'm giving you, what the fuck do you want? Say mm -hmm. it, you know, <clears throat> but sometimes I don't think he knows what he wants, you know, and right. it's it's kind of like we have to flow. And it's weird, you know? It's kind of more like podcasting. Like, me and Travis, like, we we flow together. We, oh, absolutely. You and me flow together. Absolutely. You know, we, yeah. we've, uh, you know, done tons of your shows, like, That's every right. Tuesday for, you know, months. Do I have to, sp right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, Spit and <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> that should be the name of the podcast. Spit and Twitch. Spit and Twitch. Oh, my God. It'd be like Hawk Tua, who fucking... <laughs> Oh my god! We become a parody of ourselves. <laughs> this fucking, this fucking show. I oh my god! It's like like what the fuck is this show? Like, <laughs> did me and my co-host see each other like every five weeks? <laughs> it's true. Dude, like seriously, I haven't seen Travis since. Uh, I think it's, October. Yeah, I think it's been a month at least. It's, it's when I the last show was me and Marissa on Veterans Day. Right. Right, that was a, that, which is a, a month ago, pr just about a month ago. Just about a month ago, uh, oh, you shit, know. But right. like, yeah. I, uh, dude, November was rough for me too. So like, I can't blame him. I fucking, I fucked up one day, and he was here. I think yes, and and I forgot right. to tell everyone I was working. <laughs> I got called in. Uh, you know, my job's been a little, it gets a little demanding in the spring and the fall, um, especially around the holidays. Guys start taking their vacation. You know, right. and uh, yeah. so I've, I've been working a lot of OT. Last week, I did 64 hours at, nice. at the place. Nice. It's going to be one of my best uh, weeks as a, as an engineer ever. Well, get Be married, man. You got to oh, save dude, that money. I, you know, I got to buy Christmas presents for three kids. <laughs> That's right. You know, yeah. it's fucking, dude, like I, I jumped into a family. Um, it's no joke, you know, and, um, you know, plus my niece, nephew, you know, everybody's parents, you know, like it, it, it gets up there, but it was 24 hours overtime plus a worked holiday, That's nice. you know? So like, that's, that's a huge check for me. Like that, like I wasn't feeling well, didn't want to do it. I had to like bang it out. I ended up doing like a double on Sunday, a double on Monday, fucking Tuesday and Wednesday, like singles. And then a double on Thanksgiving, wow. you know? And then, like, at the, dude, at the end of the uh, Thanksgiving double, we got it. Me and the other guy, we got in early so everybody could get home to their families. That's nice. You know? But then after me and that guy did a double, it's like 6.05 and no one's fucking there. Like, people are late. It's like, dude, we just did a double on Thanksgiving so no one else had to work. Right. You know? And everybody's showing up late. So the first guy that, like... The guy that I was working with, it was her, his first day of the week, and it was my last day of the week, and I just did all that overtime. So the second I saw someone, I'm walking out, and that guy's like senior to me, and now he's probably going to get promoted soon. So when I took first for relief, I think he got like a little offended, like he wanted it. Right. And But it was just like, I was like, dude, I'm leaving. You can fucking follow me. There's someone here. <laughs> You know, like, I I don't care. Like, I'm leaving now, you See, know? and it's all full circle. You're talking about how you prefer to work by yourself because people suck and they show Pe up late. Dude, people suck. Pe people fucking suck. Oh, my God. I Oh, I got to tell this story, too. Um, <laughs> I guess it was Tuesday or Wednesday last week. So, like, I, I had just done, like, the two doubles. And... um I live across the street from middle school. Right. Now Marissa's kids go there. Oh, jeez. So I pull out of my driveway. It's a school zone. This lady is going like 50. I'm pulling out of my driveway. She just lays on her horn. So last year, my dad doing the same exact thing. There's a blind curve, you know, from the other way. Mm -hmm. She was coming from the way you can kind of see more. 
But uh, like I saw her, I saw her at the stop sign. I'm like, I got plenty of time. She goes 20 miles an hour. Sure, right. And, you know, like, but she didn't. Uh, my dad got into an accident from the other way. Like, yeah, the guy, I think you did. You talk about it on here? I think yeah, you did, right? Yeah, you probably. Yeah. yeah, and uh, it, it was like last year or something, and. Uh, you know, so I'm pulling out, and like I didn't know if it was a guy or a girl, but I just threw my car into park, stop traffic, get out of my car, and I'm like, "Are you gonna let me get out of my fucking driveway?" <laughs> and she just she lays on her fucking horn, and I'm like, "What the fuck is wrong?" With you? So she opens her door. She's like, "It's a school zone. You have to go slow." I'm like, "I slow? I'm pulling out of my driveway. You go fucking right. slow, you fucking cunt." <laughs> <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, my future stepson is sitting in math class. Oh. His whole class here is. <laughs> Look at this psycho guy calling her a con. Uh, earlier, you know, in the school here, he's like, "Hey, my my dad, my stepdad's gonna, you know, look at his cool challenger." Right. And everybody's like, "Oh, is that a Hellcat?" And I'm like, "I can't afford a fucking Hellcat." Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a challenger, but. Every, basically, he told his whole class, I, that's me. <laughs> the school district's calling <laughs> Marissa. A little concerned about who's watching your kids. You know, so the teacher goes, oh, that guy's getting coal for Christmas. And like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I probably mortified this poor kid. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. You're yelling. At the, you... Like, yeah, little old lady's face. Like, not, I mean, you know, she was definitely like like 50s or something but uh 60s she's probably his social studies teacher or something yeah i have no idea man <laughs> but like she was flying you know and it's just like it's it's a dangerous spot you know like pulling out of there like you know like my dad's a great driver great yeah. driver never seen i don't think he's ever been in another accident wow and that guy like smashed into him <laughs> And I was smoking a cigarette out of my window, which my dad fucking hates. And uh, I watched the whole thing. And that time he liked it. And so I run down. I'm like, I saw that whole fucking thing, man. You didn't fucking stop. You're going like 50. It's school hours, man. And my dad's like, well, yeah, he saw the whole thing, you know. And he's smoking. Well, maybe the kids are like, well, we better not fuck with him. Do you see his step? But that, that's what, you know, that's the important thing. I'm glad you brought that up because he's been getting picked on. Oh, there is a kid in that class that's been picking on him. Uh, I don't know no if I'm way. supposed to reveal all this. I apologize, Marissa, if I'm not. But he's getting picked on. I got picked on in elementary school and middle school. I had what the kids call a glow up in eighth grade. Gl glow up? Glow up. I don't know what that is. It's when you kind of go from like an awkward, ugly person oh, to like okay. kind of like a handsome person. Right, right. Okay. Um, so basically I was overweight. Uh, uh, like up until like seventh grade and then like eighth grade i hit like a growth spurt so that weight all of a sudden started getting stretched over you know five ten six foot frame you know right. like yep gotcha and so like you know i and then like my dad was just like enough enough you're old enough to start using weights like started working out mm -hmm. you know started yeah doing stuff like that and then like it, my life became like a fight montage like okay bullies you know <laughs> like montage. cool like i'm gonna get suspended today are you ready to <clears throat> yep. you know and um i'd love to teach him that sure i'd love to teach him that um i don't know if she wants me to teach him that uh because like you know getting trouble in school is a lot We'd love for him to stand up for himself, but right. yes. how he's been doing it hasn't been working because these kids are doing the same exact thing. It's just what kids fucking do when I was in school. So now the kid uh, says something to him. William responds. The kid goes to the principal. I, William uh, gets attention right. because the kid went first. And... Uh, he he's been getting lunch attention. He's coming home frustrated, and I that kid was in his math class, and I hope now he saw like oh he's got a psychopath behind him, <laughs> right? Because my dad my <laughs> I'll tell you what my dad I have a lot of issues with my dad, uh, but my dad did something fucking insane. My dad is a psychopath, and um, when I was about it eighth grade. Um, 
these about 30 or 40 kids came to my house looking for me on bikes. My goodness. Yeah, 30 or 40. I was hanging out with like, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, I was hanging out with the kid around the block, you know, that was like my best friend. He was a, just a tall, skinny kid, not a fighter. Right. And like all these kids from like, the um the sock the other school in Lovetown yeah. they they all like the football team the lacrosse team the baseball team like they all like came from, they were all jocks they all knew how to fight <clears throat> um there was some shit talking that was going on and uh, they knew where I lived from like Pee Wee football so they knocked on the door my dad answers thought it was they were my friends I'm like dad these kids are here to fight me I don't know what to do so my dad fucking just come on let's go. And my dad's like, who's here to fight my son? You? Hey, you, Nick? You, Scott? How about you, Rick? You know, he knew them all from right. coaching. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they all got intimidated. You know, it's a grown-ass man. You know, and everyone's in seventh, eighth grade or whatever. And uh, they finally got the kid that was, like, doing the most shit talking. And it, became, it was a one-on-one -on -one fight. Oh, wow. I beat the ever-living shit out of the kid. Nice. It was like the first real time I lost control of my anger. I went in, I hysterically cried because it's like I didn't know how to deal with the feelings when I was that young. Sure. But uh, I didn't get jumped that day, you know? I didn't get beat up by a bunch of fucking kids on bikes. So let me let me ask, not to interrupt, yeah, but you, you kind of went from your dad was pointing out these kids to one-on-one -one fight. Like your father helped set this up or something like he he found the ringleader and said okay he'll fight you my dad's just like which one of you want to fight my son who's so, here yeah, he set yeah. it up yeah he came Holy out he, he came out right across the street um and you know right at the school and it was just like who's here who you know like I, I, you're not gonna jump in you know like it's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one fight wow. and that and that's it so after I like I literally like I I I when I black out like I start choking people and I, I'm just like like yeah and like I I it scares me yeah and um it's happened a couple times you know as I got older and like the fights became more dangerous and wow, um man. so the kid finally like got off of me I went to shake his hand he like fucking like spit at me or something he was completely embarrassed. I'm like, you know, shaking like uncontrollably, trying to hide like what I'm feeling. And my dad goes, All right, who's next? <laughs> Holy shit. Who's next? Who else wants to fight my son? You know, like because wow. he just saw me like completely tear this kid apart. Yeah. You know? And so I think he like his confidence in me it like grew, you know, like, oh, he can handle himself with mm -hmm. these kids, you know. The other kids just were like, All right, and they left. Wow. And, wow. You, you know, it's a crazy story. That is crazy. So there's, there's a lot of good and bad to that. Yeah. I got them. Yeah, I'm like all over the place in my head. Do you know, <laughs> do you know why I'm fucked up? <laughs> do you know why I, I live my life the way I do? <clears throat> Holy crap. And But but it worked? They they stopped picking on you after that? Never came back to my house. But, and then and then you stopped. Eventually, you started playing sports like a big lacrosse guy. Yeah, so. uh, well, yeah. You as I got a cool kid, I as I got older, I got more and more friends. You know, like because I was becoming good at sports. You know, yeah. like it wasn't just like I was like sitting on the bench and I was just part of the team. Like I was fucking there. You know, and I was participating. Like I remember, like. You know, I was like a defensive end, and I was just like an awesome pass rusher mm -hmm. in football. And uh, like the, you know, the cool kid, the quarterback. Right. Like the first time he ever really fucking talked to me, he's like, "Hugh, get a sack." Right. And I fucking did, you know. And right. I was just like, "Oh, fucking, this kid talked to me," you know. <laughs> like I didn't know he, th he knew I existed, you know. Like we hadn't really <laughs> talked. We became great friends later in right. life, you know. But like that's and, it. But you were probably the talk of the fucking school after you beat that kid up. Uh, yeah, you know that like that was the year where like girls started noticing me, yeah. you know, like, um. You know, and I stopped getting bullied. You know, like I, wow. it, it was, it 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 was. You know, <clears throat> when I went to high school, of course, there were the older kids that would test me, and you know, they kind of started meeting the same fate. You know, right, it was right. just like, um, 
Your father you know, unleashed a monster. He he did, man. Like he he knew what he raised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking borderline sociopath, fucking Dexter. <laughs> wow, man. Uh, yeah. So you know, I'd love because Mercer's son is a big dude. Oh, is he? Yeah, big dude, big strong kid. He doesn't know his strength. He's scared to fight. He doesn't want to get in trouble. Um. He just wants kids to leave him alone. Right. Yeah. Just like I, I did. He wants, just wants to make friends, you know? And, yeah, like, I just, like, you know, by me being a fucking psycho, you know, and doing that, I just hope maybe... Um, it might. It helped. Yeah, I, it, it maybe, might. It, maybe they, it helped. They see that. That that actually might do something. So, I hate to say it, but sometimes there's no other way. No. Dude, no. Like, uh, in my opinion... And this is where, like, alt-right people kind of drive me crazy, where they're like, bullying's necessary. Right, bullying's uh, necessary, because if you don't bully someone, they're going to end up a trans person. <laughs> you know? Like, it's just like, all right, dude, like, you're fucking insane, too. Right. You know? Just, like, shut up with your fucking insanity. Like, everybody's just screaming into the void on social media. Like, you know, this is fucking trans people. Like, fucking... And it's just like, dude, bullying is not necessary. Just let kids be kids. Right. They're kids. Right. You know, like, why do you, like, why is your son such an asshole that he's picking on someone at school? Right. Like, what did you do? Like, I just love to go to the fucking parent and be like, what did you do to fuck this kid up? Yep. Oh, I've, I've done that with my son. I've gone, yeah. to, I've gone to parents. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and Marissa would love to do that. But you know what that does? Mortifies the kid. If my dad would have called that kid's dad and like worked it out like that, I probably would have got made fun of more. And it would be like you're a pussy. You went and told your dad, and blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. you know, like, yeah, and right. it, it like it wouldn't have stopped until like there are certain people out there who have they think if they reach a certain level of energy or insanity that they'll always get what they want. Right, yes. And you have to match them. You have to match them there. You have to yes. meet them there or beat them. Right. And then they back down. And yes. they're like, whoa, that I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. I yeah. didn't know you were like, you know, like, but they're just so used to throwing a fit and getting their fucking way right. since they were a baby because they didn't know how to self-soothe, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to cry and get my bottle. Like, okay, right. you're That's fucking, exactly you it. know, infant. They don't know how to handle it when someone goes up to their level. Yeah, they don't dude, know what to do. you fucking match them at their energy. Some people will shut down. Yep. I don't like doing that because, like, I don't like I don't like showing my cards. You know, I'll, sure. Texas hold them. You know, it's, I'm gonna show it the last. I don't, it, if I fold, you don't see my cards. You know, you don't know what I'm working with, and um, I like to keep it that way. You know, but like on the rare occasion, there have been people. That I've had to do that with. One being my old boss that I think oh, I talked yes, about. you did talk the about. The incestuous it. pedophile. Right. <clears throat> that ended up killing himself. Is that a weird feeling? That, Dude, the, the, that how that story ended? Yeah. Insane. <clears throat> like, because it sounds like he was a real he tor He tortured me. During those three years... I had to start seeing a therapist. Yeah. I relapsed. I came home crying weekly to my dad. My And now my dad was the treasurer of our union, and this was an executive board member who used to work for him. Wow. So they had a tight relationship, and I never understood when my dad never made a call. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I, would call, I, I, I seriously, I wasn't doing good at my last apprentice job. This was my first job in the union not being an apprentice, making good money. I wanted to do good. I wanted to change my reputation, and this guy fucking tortured me. So, so what's it like with, like you said, the way this ended? I'm sure there's a part of you that feels he was a bully, good you know, riddance. He was a bully. But I don't, I don't know. Do you, I feel awful. Yeah, for, right. Like his family or something. His, his family. Yeah. I feel awful, awful. But I, you know, there is a little I, justification I've, at the same time. It's I've been weird. thinking about it a lot because people have been asking me about it a lot. Mm. Um, there have been two people in my life that 
my inner core did not want to be around, you know, because I knew they were an evil person. Right. I don't know if you've ever been around someone like that. I don't know if you feel it with me. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's just fear. No, no, where it's just like, no, this person is fucking evil. Like everything they do, like is, is it's off. It goes against like natural order. Like it, like, their smell, their fucking appearance, like yeah. it's just off, you know. Yep. Like this guy didn't curse. He claimed he didn't drink, you know. Uh, he eventually started coming in very, very drunk to work, and like again, fucking with me in the middle of the night. You yeah. know, I used to work overnights. He would come in at two o'clock in the morning, try to catch me sleeping, but I, you know. So he wasn't on the job. He was just showing up to fuck with you. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he man. would, you know. Apparently, he kept a drug test in his locker just for me with my name on it. Nice. You know, like, because he knew my reputation. He told everyone on the job my reputation. Guys I've never met <clears throat> thought I was, like, you know, one of the engineers, you know, who's, like, a shift supervisor. He's like, you know, when I first heard about you, and this guy was, like, fucking real autistic, and he was in, like, Camp Lejeune with, like, an Agent Orange chest. Like, so he was, like, fuck, <laughs> fuck, he was, like, fucked up. And uh, he's like, you know, when I first heard about you, I thought you were going to be, like, some strung out fucking, you know, uh, track marked fucking, right. you know. And I'm just like, no, like, I'm a good worker, you know. The, the, I mean, everything you're saying these days, that's all lawsuit material. Like, you... You could sue the union, the the company. You'd be swimming in it right now. I could. I would never do that to the union, though. No, I hear you. I, I, you the union put food on my table for. I hear you. you. Know, I'm a big 40, union guy myself. Forty yep. years. I would never do that. Um, I'm just saying, though. That's I could have level. I right. could have. Right. I, I. You know. I think. I think we we all could have had a class action suit. Um, it's not something that I haven't put thought into, but um, I don't think many people would have done it because then it's just like the union spending money to sue themselves like you know right. yeah exactly right yeah i don't know how much they would go for it but um you That's know crazy. the way that story ended was just fucking insane where it's just like i was right i was mm-hmm. right you yep. know my dad didn't believe me no one fucking believed me um that guy was evil and now there was one other person that i knew that i went to a rehab it was called St. Christopher's. It's in uh, Graymore, upstate, on, on a mountain. Uh, miracles happened at that fucking place. Is that the same one that Sean Kearns? Do you know Sean Kearns? I know Sean Kearns. He, I, I don't know if he went there, though. Because he talks about a one that was like a church-based one that was on, it, back on a mountain. Ran by monks. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it's the same one. It might be. He stayed there for like six months or some shit. Yeah, yeah I was supposed to be there for 90 days. I got kicked out for doing stand-up comedy for everybody. I shouldn't laugh at this. What? Yeah. I went went home. They sent me home with a train ticket. I had no phone. Uh, I had money because I was selling cigarettes to people. (laughs) Um, But, uh, yeah. What's wrong? So you were doing stand-up at the place? uh, Yeah. There were people there from my union and um, my high school that knew I was a comedian. Oh, wow. So it got around that I was a comedian. Everybody wanted to hear my act. So we went up. Like in this area where like, you know, there was 175 people there. I'd say about 50 to 75 showed up and they they threw me out for like organizing a group or something Oh, so like it that. wasn't necessarily the stand-up. It was the fact that you or, like, you planned it and organized it. Yeah, and then, you know, I think they thought I was becoming like too influential over people right. or something. I, I don't know. And that was your first and only offense and they there was like no tolerance. No, yeah, no tolerance, out. dude. Wow. Like they ran by my I went home and I overdosed that day. Oh, no kidding. I was that I was that bad, you know, and uh they fucking I begged them to stay and they threw me out. I I had a, like a 2 hour break in Penn Station. I didn't know what to do. Started drinking. Mm. Got home, you know, had like you know, maybe Mid afternoon, you know, and um, finally got my cell phone. Started making bad decisions because I was drunk, right? You right. know, but wow. like, what else do you do in Penn Station when you don't have a fucking phone? <laughs> right? You know, you you know, like, what was I supposed to just fucking sit there and stare at the clock? Like, I I don't know, you know, but this is how it played out. So. In that place, uh, the dorms had like twenty guys to a room. The guy that I slept directly next to 
creep me the fuck out and like I didn't want to be around him. He kind of like always wanted to talk to me because like we just naturally were next to each other. I was in the corner by a window, so it was actually a decent bet bunk. Um, and, but he was like right next to me, and uh, months later he went home and killed his mother with a claw hammer. Oh my goodness! And uh, he drove around with her dead in a car for hours. His name was Andrew. With the window down, yelling, Hugh! Yeah, where are you, Hugh? <laughs> now, he was from upstate somewhere. Oh, um, my goodness. They're, they're, so those are the two most evil people I've ever met. And uh, they chi- they gave me chills, like, yeah. you know? I, I know two people. In fact, I was just talking about it this weekend with my wife. Yeah. There are two people that I know in my life that I am convinced are just straight descendants from hell. Right. They don't have a single nice thing in their body. Yeah. Nothing. There are people like that out Absolutely. there. You know? And yep. it, like I haven't met too many, but you know when I saw that article in the newspaper, I was like I was right again. Right. You know? Like yeah. right. Uh, like well, I mean that was the first time I was right. But like then when this happened, um I had early warning when this guy um, uh, you know, when it, his life fell apart um for about a week or two and i i wasn't allowed to say anything to anybody Mm -hmm. and it was driving me nuts yeah and uh we didn't know if the story was true because the source that we heard it from maybe a little too close and i'm trying to do this without revealing who it is yeah um yeah <clears throat> it was a little, wow, t- a little too close to the situation, and uh, they were focusing on different issues. Right. So, like, they told the whole story, but they were concerned with pictures that were taken from LaGuardia of him cheating on his wife. Okay. So, it... If I say this next sentence, like it just gives it away. All right. The, the, but they were concerned with that. They weren't concerned with the main fucking issue. Right. So we right. were confused and we're like, we don't know if this tr- were true. It, I, it was a phone call to my dad, it told to me. It was supposed to be for me, but he took it. He didn't want me involved. And uh, I had to sit with that. Right. For like almost a week and a half. And then when I got the call that he opened his wrists, I was like, that's confirmed. Right. You right. know? Right. I, 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 a, a fucking innocent person would never do that. Mm-hmm. You know? <clears throat> and uh, I, it was like, it was refreshing knowing I was right. I felt awful. Well, that's awful the, it's for ref- the family. It's refreshing, but you don't want to be right at the same time. Yes. Right. Yes, dude. Like, you don't want to believe that there are really fucking evil monsters out there in human form. Right. It's crazy. Well, yeah, you go on Netflix and watch these documentaries and the old supposedly true documentaries. And you just see just how fucked up people are. Yeah, but like. Shit that's going down. Yeah, but like, you know. <sighs> How often does someone's personal life, like how often do you actually run into someone? Like you, when I watch like, the, you know, who killed John Benet Ramsey? It's just like, okay, your mom did, you know, like I fucking right. got it, you know, but like that's in fucking some other state, you know, <clears throat> fictitious to me, you right. know, it could have been made up like whatever. You're telling me that happened. Okay. I've never met them in my fucking life. You right. know? Yeah. When it gets more personal, well, I, yeah. I've, I've talked about it on my show. I knew, um, uh, I coached Rex Human's son in, 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 oh, wow. in baseball. Yeah. I, I met the man at least twice that I can remember. I, I, the wife was around more often, but yeah. Uh, so when that happened, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I barely know the guy. In fact, yeah. um, but he seems guilty as fuck. Absolutely, he's yeah. creepy. And when I met him, yeah, he was not nice. He's very uh, didn't really talk. He gave you like one word answers. He seemed grumpy, and he gives you like a weird, creepy right. vibe. Right, because like <clears throat> people who talk have nothing to fucking hide. Right, right. You know. Yep. Guys that are constantly trying to you know one word you or 
it seems like they're holding things in. Right. You know? It does seem that way. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, yeah, it is weird when things are, like, personally Yeah, attacked. where it gets to a personal fucking And then level. even, you know, Joey Petroni? Uh, even him. He lived, like, like two or three houses away from the dude. Oh, wow. So he was... When it first broke, he was going live on Facebook, and he would be in front of the house. But yeah, like a day or two later, he stopped doing all that shit. You could see it in him. I, I remember he came in here one day when it was still, and he was like, "Yeah, he, he, shook. Really, he was shook. It, he was very shook. He's like, my daughters walk past the house every day. Yeah, like it. Yeah, I felt I felt really bad for him for a yeah, little while. Yeah, but like, <sighs> yeah, <clears throat> he seemed like he kind of knew what he was doing. Right. Oh yeah. You know, he would never time, so. shit where he ate. Right. You know. Right. So uh, all right, so now going all yeah. back to the beginning of this. So what are you thinking as far as, I so you, like you said, you're hoping maybe this kid that's picking on was it William? You said? Well, yes. So he saw he saw you, <laughs> yes. out on this lady. Yeah, on this old lady. So do you, are you now just waiting to see if maybe right, to see if he backs off now or or do I, you have? I'm, hope, I'm hoping. You okay. know, I'm hoping. I'm I'm <clears throat> hoping like the kid doesn't have to fucking go into school and punch someone in the <clears throat> right. face. You know. So like, all right. So before that, with the with the lady, what was what were you guys thinking of doing? Were you thinking of calling the school? Were you going to call the kid's parents? Like, what were you thinking? She's been trying to deal with you know the principal and the assistant principal and the dean and everything. Yeah. So the principal of the middle school was the dean when we were in high school mm -hmm. he loved me he barely remembered me okay. I, but he well, loved me thing. in high school yeah you know but like i guess he doesn't recognize me as an adult but he, i i look very different i used to have a shaved head up until 11th grade yeah i remember actually i don't know why but i remember you telling me that once. yeah yeah um i grew my hair out as a senior in high school so like my my photo in the yearbook is like me with like a you know a buzz cut. Right. Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah. Top Gun. That's uh, what I'm picturing. Yeah, kind of. Uh, like, real short, you know, real fucking short, tight. And, um, yeah, you know, my girlfriend convinced me to grow it out, like, as a senior. And uh, so, like, if you would look back, like, I don't really look anything like that 11th grader, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if the picture was taken as a senior, I would look a little bit closer, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, she's been dealing with the principal, but he's not the dean. He's not the assistant principal. They're they're the ones who are doling out the punishment. Right, right. You know, the principal's more administrative. You know, like he's yeah. kind of running the whole show. He's got to deal with the upper management. You know, like there's a lot more things on his plate than dealing with lunch attention. You know, and that's what sucks. You know, because like when we showed up to back to school night, we talked to them for a while and um, it, it would be nice if, you know, the principal had this kid's back, you know, yeah, know knowing who we are, you know, like because this guy would be like, you know, Q, you're a good kid. What do you, why are you here again? And like, well, you know, teacher threw me out. It's just like, OK, well, you're going to miss tonight's game. So right. I'm going to not give you detention. Just go back and stop fucking disrupting class you know but it's weird because like me and my best friend were in a lot of classes in high school so he had ADD at the time which is now adhd or whatever right. and i was so far ahead that i would finish before the class so he wouldn't be doing his work and i wouldn't be doing my work because i had finished it he haven't even right. started right. so we would just be fucking joking around you know, and and the teacher would always tell me, he's like, you are killing him. Wow. Stop fucking bothering him. He's right. like, you're finished. You're getting 90s. He's fucking not even reading and getting 60s. You know, like, right. please, <laughs> please. Wow. Like, they, he pulled me aside. And, like, my friend is not a dumb person. He just had, has a bad right. attention span. Right. He is, uh, you know, doing phenomenal in his career now. Ended up being a Marine for five years, Very you know, nice. yeah. two tours in the fucking <clears throat> Iraq and Afghanistan. Nice. And, like, you know, you know, I can't speak highly enough about this person. He's been my best friend for 30 years, you know. Uh, he works in my union now. He's oh, wow. Doing great, you know. My dad got him a job. Um, he's better at engineering than me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's surpassed me. He has more certifications. I got to reach his level now, you know, like it, yeah. things have changed. And, uh, but at the time that's what, that's what was happening, you know, but the principal is a very good man. Um, 
my mom worked at that middle school for a long time as like a hole monitor, you know, and, um, you know, she got along great with him. So I'm hoping he can help the situation. Right. And like he has it, he, you know, cause he's been, he's just been there. The Dean was actually my English teacher in middle school. He obviously, he didn't remember me. Um, do they remember her? Because she went there too, right? Yes, yeah. A lot of them remember her, uh, but they don't remember me. But, you know, she's one of five. Oh, so, okay. like, her name, right, you know, like, name, yeah, right. like, everybody kind of knows Gaspari because, uh, you know, it's it was, like, starting with, like, her older brother was – a year or two older than me and like the youngest is like eight years younger than me, you know, like something like that. Like they're like 30 or something like that, you know? So like they, like it was like a longer span. Um, while my family is just me and my sister, we're two years apart. So we just kind of came and went, right? you know, but, uh, I'm hoping, uh, yeah, I don't know if we're running a little long. Uh, we're almost there. Yeah, right? we're, yeah, we got like five minutes or so. Mick, Mickey says, uh, Hugh, go kick the kid's ass. Yes. I, <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. You know how many times a day I want to hit children? <laughs> oh, they they do deserve it. Yes, yeah. No doubt about it. Oh, my God. It's fucking insane. <laughs> and it's like this kid just seems like such a little shit. <clears throat> it's been happening since elementary school <clears throat> and and Marissa warned the principal that this is what's happening. Wow. And it's just like so if you were warned like hey these two kids don't get along uh, they they are in like all of the same classes because they, they all are. need the extra help. Right. You know, so it's just they can't be separated but like it's 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 awful and like knowing how awful my middle school and elementary school was, I like my heart's breaking. Right. You know, it's yep. just like history's repeating itself. I and I feel helpless because I'm not his dad. Right. No. I'm not yeah. his I'm not his dad. You know, like wow. I can only offer so much counsel. Right. You know, the kid's only known me for two years. I don't know how much he trusts me, right. you know? And it, these are like really fucking deep thoughts and inner monologues that I've had with myself that I don't know if I should be fucking sharing, you know? But if anything on this fucking podcast, we've been real. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, women have left Travis over this show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, like that was fucking crazy. She was our number one fan. Oh, is that right? She was our number one fan before they started dating. Me oh. and Travis, like, because me and Travis linked up because we started hanging out at that tea place, and like, you know, it was like we clicked up. We were just hanging out, and it's like I was looking for a podcast partner. My obvious choice was Keegan. Fucking Hirschman, fucking Jewed him away from me. <laughs> what he does yeah dude now like you know like originally everyone thought me and keegan were gay and like oh they still think that yes but like and now every keegan has like five boyfriends now everybody's trying to be it's like his boyfriend like my lonis hirschman fucking richie burn richie burn everybody's like oh and it's just like no we had that relationship first you can have him man you can he came up to me at the the last holiday party last year came right up to me I'm going to kiss you on the lips. I said, yeah. no, you're not. We did that after a roast battle. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, Richie Byrne says that Mike has soft lips. He does, yeah. yeah. He does. I'll take your word for it. Um, yeah, um, that roast battle was fucking memorable. He he won. It was well-deserved. I thought I, I did well, but this is why I can't roast battle. Every time I'll, I'll always lose because there's more to make fun of me about. Yeah. Yes, I mean there's the obvious low hanging fruit with you know with the whole drugs, but drugs. What else? Yeah. That I dress gay, whatever. You dress but, gay? Well, like on stage, usually, like you know. Yeah. All right. I can. Yeah, there might be a few. I, dr- I, 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 I dress that. up. I mean, for years, I used to wear like pink shirts and ties. Right. And Did stuff. you like button all the way up and shit? Yeah. 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 I, I. Yeah. I, I still do the button up. Oh, do you? Yeah. Um. 
But uh, yeah, like I would wear like vests and like you know ties and stuff. Like Terry McNeely would be like, "Come on, we're going on the road. Grab your fucking pink tie. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> um, he he said I used to dress like Doctor Teeth from the Muppets. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> but like I lost a roast battle to fucking Emily Santosis. There's a lot worse people I would I would lose She's to. funny. She is She's very funny. funny. She's but great. I, I promised myself I was only gonna do one trans joke. Well right, and that's what's going to my head. There's a low hanging fruit there too. I, yeah. I promised myself. I said I'm yeah. a better comedian than that. Right. Yes. I if I if I hammered that point home, I might have won. Um I also had a strategy where I was like, all right, I'm going to save two of the better jokes for the overtime because I know we're going to tie. Uh, and then we didn't. You know? Oh, wow. It was fucking Lindsay Jennings was once one of the guests. She was never going to vote for me. She fucking hates me. Why? Because I always fucking call her a slut. Why was she, why was she a judge? <laughs> it was her roast battle. You know? oh, oh. It was her, Roach, and uh, this dude who used to is like fucking Pete Davidson's like best friend. I forgot his name. He's a, he's a good writer. I think he wrote for SNL for like a year and got oh. fired or something. Oh. And uh, he voted for me. Fucking Roach voted against me. Wow. And I was like, what the? I, I thought Roach was the swing vote. I knew Lindsay was going to Emily because of girl power. And uh, yeah. Wow. I'll have to. I mean, uh, I thought Roach was going to be my vote, actually. Yeah. I The other guy was the wild card because I didn't know him. But he voted for me. He's because Emily uses it in her act now. Where um, what was the oh where I said uh, she got arrested for mail fraud. <laughs> that's very good. That was that was a joke. She uses that's that great. in her act now. I said that's all you. That's all you. Yeah. Like you could have that one. You know, like I wrote that specifically for you. So here you go. <laughs> Apparently she uses it because she came up to me like you know maybe like a year or two later she's like I fucking hate you she goes that joke crushes every night yeah. she's just like I I think about it you know to think about you every time I say it <laughs> and it's just like you know I'm like it's a good joke you know it is a there good you joke. go wow you know like I I have no problem giving good jokes to comedians that fucking deserve it you know um she deserves it uh, yeah, but great. like. Yeah, that's what happens, man. You know, like I promised myself again with Keegan, I wasn't going to hammer him with fat jokes because um, I think I'm a better writer than that. Right. Agreed. You know? Yeah. Um, who else? There was some open micer that I beat, but like I'm like at one for three in roast battles or something like that. And like as like a, like a decent comedian and a like decent writer, I'm right. like, I should be better at that, you know? But it, maybe it's not my wheelhouse, you know, like maybe I'm like in unknown waters that I shouldn't be in. Like that's Sally Ani's fucking. Yeah. He's a shark in those waters. You yeah, know, I'm a, I'm a guppy. Sally Ani wins every fucking roast battle, you know, or he should at least. Um, he's good at it. You just, so yeah, it's, so it's not the words. You just. Yeah. Choke, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's my move, man. Uh, the fucking grab the Adam's apple. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, and like, people always like, yeah, you black out, right? I'm like, no, dude, like, my vision turns, like, white. It's like a white, hot rage. It's insane. Insane, dude. Like, it happened a couple times. Like, one time in college, it fucking, um, it really scared me. Like, the, like, we had to run away. The kid wasn't getting up. Oh, you my know? goodness. Yeah. The kid was not getting up. So these kids were fucking... Oh, I'm, like, I'll, I'll tell it real fast because we're going over. Um, <laughs> me and three of my college friends are at a diner. The night was kind of a bust. We're like, let's just go get food. Um, these kids are just eyeballing us. Eyeballing us. There's two guys and a girl. So this guy fucking finally, like, they finish their food. They come up. They, like, go up to us. The kid's like, you got a fucking problem? So me being me. And this is, like, my character in the book. Like, just picture, like, a fucking steampunk me. Like, the fucking, the goggles and the gas mask on my head with a cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I got a problem. Your girlfriend doesn't have my number. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so the fucking kids are waiting for us outside the diner. <laughs> They're ready to come back in. They're fucking furious. The waitress comes up to us and says, all your guys' meals are on the house if you don't go outside and fight. Oh, wow. So we're like, all right, we won't. But as luck would have it, on our way back to, you know, walk back to my apartment in Sayville, I was a junior in college. We ran into him. Oh, jeez. So my friend, uh, Sean... Starts fighting that kid that I was I was talking to. Um, they had like three rounds. It was like a boxing match. <laughs> like the kid, like he ripped off his shirt. I was like, oh my god, I wouldn't fuck with that guy. <laughs> like oh, wow. he was a lot bigger than I thought. Like yeah. he, he was hiding like the abs and everything. Like I was like, oh fuck, he's a wrestler. <laughs> like you could fucking tell. And uh, he beat the shit out of my friend Sean in the first round. My Sean, my friend Sean knocked him out in the second. And oh then, goodness. like, in the third round, it was kind of like a tie. Like, they just kept getting up and then, like, kept arguing and, like, fighting. Wow. And it was crazy. At one point, some, t- some point during, like, the third round, this ki- the other kid, he starts going to uh, my friend Ben and Dan. And he starts with Ben and he goes, you're a faggot. Then he goes to Dan. He goes, you're a faggot. And now in Levittown, I've watched this happen so many times. You don't get hit on the T. <laughs> yep. He goes He goes to me and he goes, you just, and you're, and I'm, right. boom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let him get it out. He went on the ground and I like, was hitting this kid so violently that my I, I thought all my knuckles were gone. Wow! Like I I couldn't use my hand anymore. So this is where my <laughs> comes full circle from my first thought as a blogger. My podcast was called Hammerfisting dot com. Oh wow! Because that's what I started doing to the kid. Oh! And it's just like this, like the hammer action. Oh my goodness! And and like the whole time I'm choking him out. My friends aren't pulling me off. The kid, they like Sean and the other kid, like they're worried. The girl starts saying she's going to call the cops. I think uh, one of my friends like fucking threw her phone away or something like that. Oh, wow. Like ripped it out of her hand. Like, <laughs> and like I, I beat this kid to a fucking bloody, bloody pulp. And, and like I got, uh, I got pulled off by my friends because they're like, you're going to kill him. Mm. And because uh, I wasn't stopping. You know, and like, uh, I got up. We started running away. We were like a block away, and and they were still trying to get the kid up. Oh my! God. And I was like, I hope I like, you know, you just hear those stories where it's like, oh yeah, we got into a bar fight and fucking, I hit the guy. He hit his head on a curb. He died, and I did, oh, yeah. I did twenty five years. You know, right? And it's just like, you know drunken fights in college you don't expect fucking serious yep consequences uh i know a guy that happened to he got literally tossed out of the bar and he was stumbling as he ended up in the street got hit by a car dude it's no joke you know like i haven't really thrown a punch in fucking you know over a decade now you know like i really got my anger under control nice Really, like I had to do a lot of work on myself because I was a very, very angry person. Well, yeah, you can't keep going on like that forever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that was like one of the other times where that was just fucking wow. I lost control, man. Well, good luck to William, and I hope yes, uh, I, ho- I hope you know, I hope that. things fucking turn around. Right. November was a shitty month for everybody uh, that I've been talking to. Uh, I'll tell you fucking last, you know, as of December 1st, I had a real good night last night. Today's off to a pretty decent start. Good. Thank you for being my co-host. Oh, my pleasure, pal. Thanks for having me. I feel like I talked more than I wanted you to talk more. Uh, but I, you know, I I told a bunch of stories today. Yeah, it was good. It was good stuff. Um, thank you. My pleasure. Um, so the only sponsor I'm going to mention is, uh. Sage and selenite. 
Uh, Sage and Selenite. If I can find it. Is that one? Yes. Yeah, it is that one. Yes. Okay. Uh, apparently, you know, one of the sponsors hasn't been getting back to Travis, and uh, the other sponsor, you know, not much very communication with me. Uh, but this place, they love us. Uh, we love them. I'm going to get there because, uh, you know, I'm obsessed with my crystals and wizard stuff. Um, and I got to check it out. Me and Marissa, we love our crystals. Nice. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, it's weird putting like faith into fucking rocks, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do it. I do it. You know, you believe in a fucking sky daddy with a beard. Uh, you know, people believe in different things. That's it. Uh, don't fuck with my religion. Uh, Sage and Hill Night, man. Go there. It's in Long Island. Uh, give it a Google for the location. Cause uh, honestly, I haven't been there yet, but they love the show. Um, I think it's an S. Selenite. Yeah, I have no idea how to spell Selenite. Seaford. Seaford. Oh, new, yeah, it's fucking right here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to get, yeah, when Marissa's off, I'm I'm going to take her there. Where relaxation meets yeah. zen. Holistic spa and boutique. It, dude, it looks like such a cool place, you know? I got to take her there because it's like we like this type of stuff, you know? It looks like really zen. Yeah. You can get facials, reiki stuff, massages. massages. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sc different types of scrubs. Acupuncture, I think. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, nice. did lots of stuff there. Gentleman's facial. I didn't know there was such a thing. Uh, that, you know, that sounds like a Pornhub term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Ear candling. Ear what? candling. Is that, what is that, supposed to like clear the ear out or something? I, I Yeah, I think so. Really? Yeah. I might try that. Fun. Yeah, lots of lots yeah, of good stuff cool. there. Uh, check it out, please. They sponsor the show. They like us. The other two sponsors haven't been, you know, like the other place wasn't answering Travis's calls. Apparently, <laughs> you know, All the right. last time I talked to the fucking knife guy, he was like, "I was like, can you send us something?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah what happened to the last stuff I sent you?" I'm like, "I paid for half of that." I'm like, you fucking jerk off. Oh, I know exactly where this is. So this is um. Yeah, this is, it's on Merrick Road in Seaford. It is right, almost like smack middle between the Seaford Oyster Bay Expressway and the Wanto Parkway. Oh, dude, that's so close to me. I have yeah. no reason not to get there. Yep. Next Saturday, I'm going when Marissa's off. <clears throat> there you go. Early Christmas gift for Marissa. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe I should go and get her something there. We're like, not tell see her. I see that. Who's got your back, pal? Yeah. Whoop, that's the wrong Thanks, graphic. Tony. I'm here for you. We want that one. Yeah. Okay. Nah, a little knock them dead plugs, fine. Yeah, cool. Hey, you got anything you want to plug? <clears throat> December 13th, uh, we're doing a show in the Giggle Room. Uh, Mike Pacetti is hosting. I'm doing a few minutes. Mark Riccadonna is jumping up, and Don Jameson is headlining. Awesome. Yeah, very excited about awesome. that. Awesome. Thank you. I had a show on my calendar for December 7th. Don't know who. Don't know. <laughs> you know location? Don't know. I thought it was Kegan and Friends. That's that's December twelfth. Uh, December twelfth at the brokerage. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Th I don't think I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who booked me on a show. If you booked me on a show, please tag me in a fucking flyer. It's a week away. It's yeah. a week away. It's this weekend. Why is it? It's in my calendar. A comedy show, eight o'clock this Sunday. Go see possibly Hugh somewhere. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not Sunday. Yeah, this December seventh is this Sunday. It's not a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Yeah, oh, I'm, you know, uh, it's, it's a, this weekend, though. Either way, it's, it's coming right it up. It says Gov's Little Room. <laughs> I made sure I had off. I t spoke about it on the podcast with Marissa. It says Gov's, uh, it says the Giggle Room? Giggle Room. I checked Gov's. Yeah, they don't have anything listed. Gov's.com, they have nothing listed. For this Saturday. <laughs> nothing listed. Which is strange. So I'm wondering if somebody canceled. That's they, possible. Yeah, they usually don't. Boy, they got canceled. No, that could be. But, yeah, maybe. But I don't know. I, I checked. There's nothing. Yeah, nothing. There's something on the 6th. I'll, yeah, Ghosts and Giggles. 
Go see fucking Ghosts and Giggles on the seat <laughs> six. Come to Governors, man. That's dot com. Anthony Rodia's in the main club all weekend long. Oh, Rodia. Yep. That's big. Heavy hitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. That yeah. should be fun. He's always fun. <clears throat> oh, the, they love him. Absolutely. Yeah. He he always does a good job. If you like Italians. <laughs> 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 oh my Nona has fucking plastic on the couch Oh you got a Nona? I got a Nona <laughs> Fucking Italians Jesus Christ I eat spaghetti Yeah we call it We call it sauce without gravy Oh hilarious We fucking get it Hey they're loyal though They you know he's made I, it's not, I'm not bad. just making fun of fucking Rodia I, I don't want to like just rip him apart <laughs> I just feel like that's Italian humor. It's just being like recycled from fucking uh, Sebastian. <laughs> oh my! My dad knew someone in the mob. Uh, he was a bookie. Uh, he ran numbers. Uh. And that's why there's no show for him this Saturday. Yeah, f- yeah, dude. I don't fucking care anymore. Oh my god. But uh, yeah, dude, Govs dot com. Go see Anthony Rudia. He's very funny. I've seen him. Oh, I, I, he made yeah. me laugh a lot. Yep. You know, I Great I energy. just like to rip on Italians. That's that's what we do on the show because we're all Irish. <laughs> um, and that's it, man. All My right. name's Hugh Murray. Uh, follow me at the Logic. Follow at Treading Water Podcast. Follow at uh, Govs Comedy Podcast. Govs Comedy Club Podcast. Go Comedy Club Podcast. Thank Follow you very that. Much. And uh, yo, have a good one. See ya. <laughs>